morning everyone it is Wednesday June 14th wow uh, I'm sorry I actually just realized that for the past few episodes I've actually missed stating the date so there you go <laughs> um, I just want to say a quick thank you to everyone for your patience last week I was so busy with a few different things that I was working on that I actually forgot that I told you all that I would be by to record. <laughs> Oops. Um, I'll explain more about that in a bit. Um, either way, I wanted to say a warm hello to any new viewers and a welcome back to all returning viewers. I do appreciate you coming by. It's not even noon and it's already pretty warm in Connecticut. Um, but such is the nature of late spring, huh? <laughs> all right, enough philosophy. Let's get down to the reason you're all here, the knitting. So grab your joint drink of choice, your crafting, and away we go. Mm. Excuse me while I take a sip of my own coffee here. I'm still not quite awake yet. Mm. Ooh, watermelon best thing in the world. Anyway, um, let's move on to my favorite things. Um, the first one I need to discuss was Worldwide Knit in Public Day. So in case you kind of live under a rock or you didn't know, last Saturday the 10th was Worldwide Knit in Public Day. Especially if you don't already know, it's probably good to know. Um, I actually hosted one event there at my local high school. Um, it was just so much fun to plan. I honestly, I wish I actually had gotten more of a turnout and more time to promote it, but oh, it was totally worth it. And it was still so much fun. I got a little bit of sun, uh, AKA since I am naturally a redhead, I burned the F out, but that's fine. Um, it was totally worth it. I hope everyone did get some time to uh, do some public knitting or crocheting done on Saturday. The funniest thing I think that came out of that was I had this cheeky little high school girl ask me what I was making, and as she and her friends walked walked away, I heard her say, "My grandmother knits." <laughs> I immediately was gonna. I well, sorry. I immediately shot back. So does mine. She taught me to, le to, to to knit when I was younger than you. Hey, just let me know if you want to learn. I do teach. <laughs> she laughed, and it seemed to be the end of that. However, at the end of the day, both she and her friends came by to see how my sock had progressed. So I'm thinking that I actually impressed her with my quick comeback. But I don't know. I think she was kind of intrigued. <laughs> um. So the next little bit of... Oh, lovelies that came my way. I had several packages actually. The first, since last time we spoke, are the super super miniatures I ordered. In the package, there are it's actually just one missing from that photo, but I'll tell you which one in a second. Um, I did get the cinnamon roll, the s'more, which happens to be the one that's missing, but it's super cute. It's actually on one of my projects. I forgot to take a picture of it. Bad podcaster, right? <laughs> Um, there's also a pink macaroon, a blue macaroon, and a yellow macaroon. Oh, awesome. And then there are two to-go coffee cups. They are so super cute, guys. Oh. I also got a pink sparkle donut, a confetti cake, and a chocolate chip cookie. Oh. Let me tell you, those look almost good enough to eat. So well done, Chels. Well done. <laughs> the other package that came in this week was a shipment from San Marcos Coffee. Um, as you probably heard, I did get me some watermelon. <laughs> In fact, we got two boxes of watermelon, the K-Cups, because um, we do have a Keurig, so that's the easiest way. And then that way, if MDI really wants any coffee, he can. He can always just help himself, which is 
awesome. And he can t pick a different flavor because he's not really as big a fan of the watermelon as I am. However, we also did get the peaches and cream because it was a favorite of ours last summer. So I wanted to make sure we get that back. There's also the white chocolate brownie. Oh, the chocolate brownie, which we did only get the one box of only because... Well, quite frankly, we both love us some for some brownies and having to hang around too much didn't seem wise, right? Um, but those are about three quarters gone already because MTI kind of likes that, that flavor. Not going to lie, I do too, but mostly I leave it for him. Yeah, because <laughs> I have all the watermelon to take up my time now, right? Um, since we normally do go about six months out when it comes to our coffee shipments, we had been planning for the holidays as well. So obviously, because since six months happens to be December at this point, right? Um, so we did order some candy cane, 12 count of those, uh, some peppermint and the pumpkin spice, because you have to as you do. Anyway, um, we also did get uh, chocolate banana as well because oh, that's one of my personal favorites and yeah, <laughs> I get what I want. And you're not the boss of me, MDI. <laughs> All right, and the last thing that we did get was the orange creamsicle. Um, that was the largest quantity we got of a 40 count because of that one. That one is our ultimate favorite, and we can pretty much drink that one ever. So, um, the last thing that came in the mail this week was the Knit Girls Seven Year Pottery Kit. Um, spoiler alert to anyone that ordered one, um, you might want to skip ahead. I'm actually going to be listing what was in the package as well as my interpretations of it, I guess, if we can put it that way. I'm going to put a timestamp below just so you can jump to it and just so you know yeah you know what i like the play well don't say i didn't warn you i love how this is all packaged up let's see if you can sense a theme look at all those goodies y'all oh all right, so what was in the package was that cute cat and yarn bag by Twist Fiber Studios. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to use it, y'all. I think I have half a project in there already because there's one that I need to start soon. <laughs> um, the other thing that was in the package was this little bit of loveliness called the Seven Year Itch by Desert Vista Dye Works on the, her Visa base. Look at that gorgeousness. Like squishable I don't know what I want to use it for but it's so cool oh, well done well done Desert Vista well done and for, and for Leslie and Lala for picking their colors because yeah <laughs> they're gorgeous absolutely gorgeous okay I need to stop staring at y'all I'm gonna start drooling soon um <laughs> So another thing that was in the package was this awesome tape measure. I'm sorry, it kind of flipped itself when I went to put the picture in. So, but yeah, it's so cute. I love it. I love it. And you can clip it on things. Ah! Anyway, um, there was also this cool card. Um, this is the Knit Girls and the Seven. And oh, look at those sheep. Those sheep. Um, and yeah, there was a, on the back of it was a, a little special card message and signed by both of them, which was an excellent and awesome little touch. What do you guys think? Uh, we also had the couple of stickers left over and there was the um, sticker itself. There was one more that was on the front part of the packaging as well, which awesome guys. There was such an awesome theme in this bag um, and they did continue it on this awesome canvas bag. It is so huge. I have no idea what I'm going to put in it. Uh, probably to help me carry projects. I have no idea. I'll figure it out later, right? <laughs> um, also, there was a tufted vanilla lip balm in there. It said on there, I'm celebrating seven years with the Knit Girls. Oh my god, awesome touch, guys. Trust me, that's awesome. And the last little bit of a little bit of goodness in there that I've gotten a lot of use out of already, and it just arrived yesterday. 
is a red knit girls pen oh my god you guys <laughs> it writes so awesome and the tip that you see there is actually rubber so you can use that on like a kindle or an ipad or anything like that so this is something that needs to go in my bag especially when i'm working on a lace patterning so that way i can go ahead and see it I'm going to apologize now. It seems like the guys are going to be doing the lawn <laughs> um, out back, hence why both the really loud humming in the background as well as Mario trying to run from it because he assumes that if he can hear it, the guys are going to come and run him over with the machinery. Don't know why, but it's an irrational fear and we have to deal with it, right? <laughs> Crazy cat. I love you. You can't hide under mommy's table, okay? <laughs> he's looking at me like yeah okay whatever mom anyway let's move on before i start yelling at mr mario right <laughs> um let's move on to fo's i do have a few finished objects guys that's also a part of the reason why i did not feel that i needed to come back last week because i was kind of in the middle of a few projects to finish. Um, the first one that I finished was, well, quite frankly, I'm kind of a fail with this 2017 gouache cloth thing. I'm just a bit behind. I finished one in two weeks, guys, so eventually I'll catch up, right? I'm hoping. <laughs> um, the next thing I finished was the Elementary My Dear Doctor. This is something that I finished, I started it and even finished really quickly. It went so fast. The pattern was Brickless by Martina Bem. I used Knitter's Pride Felici in the Time Traveler colorway, which is the bottom part, the crazy scarf looking thing. And then you had Baker Street, which is the one in the middle, and Wizard at the very end, because both those guys are magic. <laughs> So those are my colors and that's my story and I am sticking to it. For this one, I used a size US 7 marbles needles. Oh my gosh, it came out so awesome, guys. I think it's not more, it's more of a, um, a scarf or a shawlette than an actual shawl, but totally awesome, guys. Like that, what you're seeing in the picture is a very minimal amount of blocking that I put into it. If I were to block the heck out of each section, then I probably could get a little bit more distance, but I like the way it came out. I'm going to be honest. Um, so yes, the next thing I finished was the Lorelei's MCAL mystery knit along that I did back when the knit girls are not knit girls <laughs> the Gilmore girls are having their revamp thing come out um the pattern itself is the Lorelei's MCAL by Christopher Salvis I used two different colors of Lorna's Lisa's shepherd star shepherd sock sorry wow say that 10 times fast <laughs> um in both the Lorelei's colorway and denim colorways Oh my gosh, guys, it's so gorgeous. Um, I wish I had actually blocked out the lace a little bit more for that picture. But, you know, time crunch and trying to put it up on um, make yourself deadlines and things like that for stash dash, right? <laughs> anyway, um, I used a size US for Susan Bates Metal Cirques. So, they, oh, that came out awesome, guys. I can't stop staring at it. Ugh. But I've got to. All right. So the next thing that I finished, I called Dreamy Love. Yes, it's that big. Like it covered pretty much the back of my chair. Like, yeah. Um, the pattern is the Yowza Way at Shawl Number no. Two by Susan B. Anderson uh, in the You Gotta Love Me um, colorway from Miss Babs of Yowza. Oh my gosh. It's um. I did it a, on a size US 9 60 inch chai goo needles. Guys, like it did not even fit on the needles by the very end. It's that big. I can't even tell you. I'm going to have to do like a glamour shot. <laughs> you know, that shot where, you know, the Titanic. That shot, yeah. <laughs> Those kind of shots. I'll have to make sure to show you later on what that shot actually looks like <laughs> maybe on instagram who knows um the second or the sorry the next thing that i finished i am calling super secret project number one 
Um, <laughs> it's completely new since the last time we talked. So there was actually four of these. Um, I can't tell you who I'm make, making them for or what I'm making them for, um, so we'll just leave it at that. <laughs> but I have plans in the works, and you'll see a few of them come around the bend later. I won't tell you who they're for, though. Sorry. Don't want to spoil the surprise. Um, the pattern itself is the Doctor Who logo by Holly Narf. This is the new Doctor Who logo, I guess you can say since it was revamped with the ninth doctor so ah, i'm excited i saw that and i just i had to knit it <laughs> um the yarn i'm using on this one was a cascade 220 superwash in the turquoise colorway it's not quite the tardis blue but it was close enough that I wanted to use it, right? Uh, I'm using a size that you have six straight needles. I think they're also Susan Bates, but I've had them for a long time. Yeah, that's what I call a deep stash in my needles. <laughs> um, the next thing that I finished was the, all oh, this red is knitting up like butter. Look at this, guys. And the pattern itself was the color Affection by Vera Valimaki. Let me tell you, this is my second one. I, as I mentioned before, I think in recent weeks, I didn't realize I was on the wrong needle size. I used, did this on a size US2. Um, they are on the 40 inch Chai Gu needles. Uh, she calls for a six. <laughs> So it's a little bit smaller than I would think, but you know what? I still love the way it came out. It's all those reds, yo. I'm telling you. The, the red and the, the butter color, they're my jam, yo. <laughs> um, so anyway, the colors that I used was actually a Dream in Color Smushy on all three in the Miami Red, the Butter Peeps, and the Lipstick Lava colorways. Oh my gosh! absolutely gorgeous y'all <laughs> all right i need to stop staring at it let's move on to half objects i have oh i have oh oh yeah yes i do i have actually several the first one i've actually got a hoe and the ribbing on the next one um and just beyond that even what you see there on the uh this is halloween <laughs> project that I've been working on for a little while. Um, I cast these on for Halloween last year. The pattern itself is the Jack-O-Lantern Self-Patterning Socks by Abigail Grasso. Um, she is both the designer and the um, yarn dyer. She is artistic yarn by, by Abby. Oh, and the colorway itself is Jack-O-Lantern. So if you noticed in the picture itself, those are supposed to be pumpkins. But isn't the way it came out even better? It's more my aesthetic. I was actually worried that the jack-o'-lanterns would limit how much I can actually wear them in, you know, just in the ha Halloween season. I feel like I can have a little bit of Halloween all year round with the way that it knit up now. I love that pooling, yo. It was a happy accident, let me tell you. Um, the pattern itself is written for a couple, like a size smaller than what I needed. Yeah, and I think I also had inverted the yarn too, so whatever. I do what I want. <laughs> um, I'm using SIZUS 2 9 inch circular needles, which you can see there. And the bag that I'm using is the Purple Birds bag, which you can see finally now. I had the foresight to take a picture, I guess, <laughs> of the project on top of the bag. So yay! <laughs> yay me for doing something right this week, right? Um, the other hoe I have, where are you leading me, Mario? I will, where you lead, I will follow. So I have a hoe and a toe. Yay. As you can see, um, I have two different colors going on right now, mostly because I was afraid that I would be running out of yarn um, by the time I finish the second sock with just that first colorway. So I switched it up a little bit. I'm gonna be doing the um, the first color that I used was the inner zen, inner yarn zen, the old muddy rid, the, the old muddy river knitathon colorway, 
And then the second way, when I got to the ribbing, I said, oh, hey, cool. I have this other one that is Gilmore Girls themed. It's the No Makers Fancy Gnome um, Stars Hollow colorway. So I'm actually going to be switching that. Um, you'll see here I put the um, Stars Hollow colorway as the base of the sock. So, And then hopefully I'll have enough leftover of both colors so that I can go ahead and put both of these into I'm, I'm hoping to do a sock weight uh, yarn blanket down the road. I don't know when exactly I'll start that, but uh, I love, love, love those colors, guys. I'm sorry. I can't stop staring at it either. <laughs> and more humming in the background. I do apologize to everyone who's got earbuds on, and you can probably hear this a lot better than everyone else. Yeah, I may have decided that. Yep, it is time to do the lawn, and that is it. Um, we live in a condo complex where everything's kind of taken care of for us, and they come by every, it seems like completely random times in the morning to do everything, and apparently today is the day, y'all. So sorry. I'm going to have to try to tone it down a little bit there in the background, or talk over them. I can do that too. I have vocals. Contrary to people that I work with, believe. <laughs> um, anyway, um, I, I digress. Let's move on to works in progress or what's on my needles. Mm. As I mentioned before, there are several of many secret, super secret projects that I'm planning. This one happens to be super secret project number two. I have not gotten very far on it. Um, it'll give away the patterning if I really, you know, do more, I suppose. Um, the pattern on this one is the Doctor Who bow ties are cool, also by Holly Narf. I'm also using a kind of, sorry, a Cascade 220 Superwash in the Strawberry Cream colorway. Gorgeous. I absolutely love it love love these colors i'm using also the size us6 straight needles normally it's in a bag right now it's just kind of freestyling it does what it wants it's actually sitting on the couch next to me right now <laughs> oops should probably find a bag to put that in i have a couple <laughs> um the next thing that is new since the last time we spoke i am calling it good old glory so basically how this uh, this work and project work with how this whip happened was that I have two skeins of yarn that have been in my stash for quite a bit. I wasn't sure what I wanted to do with them. I don't know. So I'm going to try to make a lap blanket out of them. Um, so wish me luck. The pattern on this one, um, I've done a blanket out of this pattern before and it kind of worked out to my favor. So we'll see how it goes this time, right? The pattern is Grandma's Favorite Dishcloth by Ruth Slate. Um, the color I'm using, it's a red heart team spirit color of the red, white, and blue. Hence why old glory. Uh, I'll let you stop if you don't, you don't know, you don't know what that means and just Google it. I'll wait. Um, but anyway, this project is also freestyling it as well. It's just kind of hanging out like, yeah, doing what it wants. <laughs> um, another older whip that I have going is the Christmas tree socks. Um, this is a simple French vanilla cappuccino socks by Susie Alman. Um, I have a single sock blank, single knit sock blank technically, um, from Gail's art called Christmas Tree. I cast this on as my Christmas, um, my Christmas cast on, and oh, it's gorgeous, guys. This is the second sock. The little um, progress, creepy, the progress keeper that you see was where I was the last time we talked. Yeah, <laughs> I did quite a bit. I um, just passed the heel, and then that was actually where I ended up, um, on Saturday. Believe it or not, I did a mo majority of that on Saturday. <laughs> I had so much fun just kind of knitting it up. And then as everybody started to leave, I did put the heel in and I finished the heel up on Sunday. So yeah. Um, the needles I'm using are a US 2 and 9 inch set, uh, circular needles. Ugh, they go so fast. 
let me tell you, on those nine inch circulars, because if you're knitting in the round, you hardly ever know like how much you've done. <laughs> um, but yeah, it is actually currently in a Ziploc bag right now. Um, as I mentioned before, I have found it is the easiest way for me to just put the sock blank rolled up into the bag. As you can see, <laughs> I wanted to demonstrate that in the, in the photo. It's just kind of rolled up like, hi, I'm in a bag. <laughs> um, the other thing that I have been working on actually quite a bit since the last time we talked, I think I want this to be my next finished object for stash dash, but I'm not, don't quote me on that. Um, I'm actually finally to the last little patterning section. If you can see, it's kind of growing a bit. <laughs> I'm already planning my next shawl. <laughs> um, this one is called the Coffee Date by CC Almond. Let me tell you, I'm already planning my next coffee date. That's how much I loved this pattern, and I still do. I'm using three different bases of the Plucky Knitter. Um, the bellow, on the bellow base, the putty in my hands. Um, it is the um, Plucky Knitter Single on the Give a Hoot. And the last one is on Primo Fingering. It's called Enchantment. I'm using a size US 3 cubic platina needle. Um, I think that cable length now. And this is actually different than the last time. It was on a Chai Gu needle. Um, the joins on the needles themselves were fine. They're still intact. It's just one of those ergonomic needles. So a lot of the yarn, it was just getting stuck on it. And I'm not really a fan of knitting for hours on an ergonomic, like, I think that's how you pronounce it, um, a needle. It actually hurts my hands worse. Believe it or not, I am weird like that. <laughs> anyway, um, I am, if you, as you can see, this project is in the Exploding TARDIS bag. It's more than outgrown the bag, but yeah, I can't seem to stop using it for this project. <laughs> I love it so much. All right, so what you're reading, Silver? Um, quite a bit. It's actually over the past couple weeks, I have read quite a bit, finished quite a bit of books. Um, a lot of them are have been audiobooks, believe it or not. Um, probably in equal measure. Um, what I'm going to talk about anyway, because yeah, I have five books that were as Leslie of the Knit Girl says, not contributing much to society, um, AKA um, could be anything from, I, I'm very eclectic in my reading tastes, so <laughs> it could be just anything. Um, they were just kind of meh for me. A lot of them had a lot of grammatical errors, so I don't want to mention them, but I did enjoy them at the time, so there's, there's something. All right, let me take a quick drink and then we'll go on from there. <laughs> So what I do want to talk about is I did get more into the, um, as I put them, the counting books um, <laughs> in Cedar Cove uh, by Debbie May Comer. I finished number 44, Cranberry Point, number 50, Harbor Street, and number 5B, Poppy Lane. That was awesome. I'm currently now reading through number 6, which is the 6 Rainier Drive book. So far, so good. I haven't gotten more than like an, a couple hours in. It was like 12 or 13 hours, I think. Don't quote me on that. I don't remember. I'm sorry. It's been a few days. Um, I also have been uh, finished up the Nerds series by Vicki Lewis Thomas, Thompson. Sorry. Ooh, sorry. Um, <laughs> the last book in that series I finished was uh, Nerds Are From Mars. Oh my God, that's awesome, guys. I loved that book. I love the titles and I kind of hoped there were more, but nope. <laughs> anyway, um, I also went back to a book series by Suzanne Farrell um, that I had read before. The first book I think is Close to You. I finished that long ago and said, oh, I'm going to read the rest of the series someday and never did. <laughs> so I came back to it um, close to home. I read, I also read Close to the Fire, which are the two in the trilogy that she says is part of the series and that's it. However, Goodreads does mention that there are um, several um, novellas afterward as well and they, they're kind of part of it, right? <laughs> so I also read... Um, the novella Close to the Mistletoe, 
and then the other one was close to Santa's heart. So those are all five of them read in pretty much a week and a half. Not gonna lie, it was a good good time for me to read last week. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I did pick out a quote that I really liked from Close to the Mistletoe that's probably going to be one of my favoritest quotes ever. Um, this is, she was referring to one of the um, characters named Harriet in town. This was the main character, of course, being kind of sassy and who she is. Anyway, um, this is the quote. Ready? Okay. How does she do that? She's like an all-knowing Yenta with the skills of a ninja. I mean, come on. I can't stop laughing even now. Like, I, I spent a oh, good five minutes after I read that saying, what? <laughs> That's awesome. And just kept going from there. Guys, it was so much fun to read that. I do recommend all of those books I mentioned. I do recommend highly. Um, you'll notice on my Goodreads, each one of those is five stars uh, or four stars and above, really. Um, anything that I find fits into the other not contributing much to society is anywhere from like a two star to four star so <laughs> that's so you know anyway what you watch in silver um quite a bit like I said I've been kind of hiding in and reading whenever I can obviously since I got burned on Saturday on Sunday when I wasn't working I spent the time inside kind of being a hermit <laughs> yeah bad for MTI, but good for me. So that way I didn't get like second degree burns. Anyway, that's how bad I got burned. Yes. Anyway, 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 moving on, moving on. Oh, geez. Sorry. Let me one more drink of my caffeine. I need caffeine apparently. First cup of the day still y'all. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> All right. So TV wise, I did watch the two episodes of Doctor Who, new episodes. Three words. Missy was back. Enough said. I can't wait to see what they do with that. Me personally, I mean, they haven't really announced who the new Doctor is yet. I'm going to come out and say it. I kind of am wishing that he turns into River Song. Just going to put that out there to. Any BBC ears out there? Anyone who has the power to make that decision? Please, please let Alex Kingston be the new doctor. I would love it. Love it. Anyway, also on TV wise, I watched up until season four, episode four, um, last night actually. <laughs> Erica Durant's awesome lady let me tell you, she's so sassy and she brings she brings her A game as 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 Lois. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny to see them in the early stages of a relationship when you know what they're going to end up being, right? <laughs> um, another thing I did watch, actually, the only movie I watched over the past couple weeks, Beauty and the Beast. Yeah, so I did watch Beauty and the Beast a couple times. Um, the second time, I actually ended up watching all three hours, I believe, of the bonus content as you do. Let me tell you, all the work that goes into that movie, I am so surprised at like, at how it ended up. You know, you've heard my review, right? <laughs> if you haven't, pause it. Go back a couple episodes. You done that? Cool. Welcome back. Um, anyway, so I have been catching up with a lot of podcasts as well. I've kept up with the Geeky Girls Knit Podcast as well as the Knit Girls. Obviously, those are, those are a must for me. Um, <laughs> in good news, um, Cece's husband <laughs> has gotten his doctorate. So, yay, Russ! <laughs> You're awesome. And I, I have to say, if you don't follow her on Instagram, you probably should. Um, Cece... And Dammy both were mentioned in his dedication of his dissertation. And that's what he was defending, actually, today, this morning. I uh, finally got the good word. <laughs> I was kind of crossing my fingers and hoping he did well, and he did. So that's always a start, right? <laughs> anyway, um, so 
yes, congratulations <laughs> to all of them, really. Um, and then, so I also have been watching uh, In a Snit. It was a couple episodes that I was backed up on. I did go ahead and ca catch up on those as well. I watched a couple of episodes of Stitching the High Notes because mostly I somehow got backed up on those too. Oh yeah, I know the reason why I got backed up on those. I had decided that before I watched any other um, episodes of things that I watch all the time, I wanted to really watch through all of the Grocery Girls, as evidenced by how many episodes I got through in two weeks. I actually started midway through episode 20. I'm all caught up now. Um, they That was 40 was the last episode that they had two weeks ago, I think, or about a week and a half ago. Um, that includes any of their little like side announcements and anything like that. I also stopped about halfway through that and just decided to watch their off the off of our needles episodes of crafty oh my gosh or craftsy craftsy Oy. anyway um they're a hoot let me tell you i could not stop watching them their love of yarn is very addictive and it's not even just yarn yarn dyers but like they just oh, they they're they're awesome <laughs> like they are completely awesome and i am glad that i was able to find them and watch through them they're relatively new podcast for me i would say i found them back about a month ago maybe a month and a half wait you know and it's fun because you sit there and you get your coffee and you just kind of hang out with them for a couple hours and it makes the time go by so fast <laughs> all right we have come to the end i've kind of blathered on a little bit considering i didn't really have i felt like i didn't have much to talk about so anyway um i'm pretty social you can find me on our ravelry board which is silver's dreamline podcast on ravelry i am silver luna 2112 on facebook so we can be found directly at www.facebook.com and as a backslash Silver's Dreamland. On Instagram, I am both Silver's Treats and Silver's Dreamland. Um, most of the time, however, and quite frankly, I've been starting to worry about not using the Silver's Dreamland tag and just going with Silver's Treats just because that's how much I'm on it. <laughs> anyway, um, on Twitter, I am at Silver's Knitting. I do tend to read through all messages as soon as I possibly can. However, if you don't hear from me within 24 hours, please feel free to email me directly at silversdreamland at gmail.com. Okay, as I mentioned before, I've rambled on long enough. I know your time is valuable, so please feel free to join in any discussion or even start your own on our Ravelry board. I don't bite, I promise. Um, please stay tuned for episode 27 on the 21st. Until next time, happy crafting. Happy, wow, words today. <laughs> Bye, y'all. Party people! Yeah!